as I'm sure you can recall the James captain came in with no spark so I thought today we'd try and find the spark here you can see me unscrewing the little Bakelite holder that holds the high tension lead against the ignition coil you have to be careful with these but someone had put sealant on this one which made it almost impossible to take out with your fingers Bakelite is very brittle and easily broken so be careful first test high tension lead just to check the continuity this is a copper core lead they don't normally go wrong but just in case it's as simple as that nothing wrong with that we move on to the ignition coil itself I've already checked the points and condenser they look brand new so I doubt there'll be much wrong with them here I'm trying to find a, a resistance reading between the output of the coil and earth in this case the engine casing and in, in a perfect world it should be about 5000 ohms resistance 3500 and you've got problems so just checking here also checking against the the pole of the coil just in case the earth is is a bad connection but no result open circuit so a replacement coil rather than take all the points and condenser out anybody that's done these before knows that can be a right pain I snip the wire between the points and the coil cheating really fitted the new coil to its poles and now I am placing the coil back on the base plate trying to locate the point where the ignition high tension lead comes in and touches the coil you can just see in the picture there the little brass pad that the coil lead rests on so locate that and then screw it into position lock it all down next is to solder on a little bit of wire to join up with the original points wire same color in this case red it goes to the load tension side of the ignition coil there's a little little solder point there that you can solder to I always find it best to tin the wire before presenting it to the coil. Tinning the wire just means getting the wire hot enough to soak up a bit of um, solder, run it into the fibres of the wire and just make it nice and clean and ready for a, a, a simple solder joint then to the coil. It also helps that you don't overheat the coil wire as well. When they're both tinned you just literally touch them until they flow into each other and the job's good. Doesn't require a prolonged appliance of the soldering iron. With that securely in place you just trim the wire then to meet up with the original points wire again not a bad thing to tin the two wires before actual joining and don't forget the heat shrink to go over the joint once it's finished very easy to do
This is where it's handy to do this instead of changing the points and condenser. Everything's in front of you, nicely laid out on the base plate. Easy access. You'd still have to solder on the eye for the points because the wire comes in from the back from the condenser through a small grommet and then you have to solder the eye on to screw to the points. So in this case a lot easier. And with the joint soldered, you simply slip the heat shrink across the join. And then warm it up gently with the soldering iron until it shrinks into place. And then before the whole back plate goes back onto the engine casing, a small smear of gasket sealer around the flange just to stop any air ingress into the engine if the seal on the crankshaft is a bit weak and then screw it up get everything into its original position make sure every screws are tight You then bring the engine to top dead centre I'm using a screwdriver down the plug hole to find top dead centre I don't want to grip too hard on the threads with the vice grips for fear of damaging and then you back the piston back to the required depth for timing. Uh, I think it's about 5 sixteenths on this particular engine. And then one final thing before the flywheel goes on, give the cam in the centre a wipe with wet and dry just to make sure there's no corrosion on that face as it will wear the pad out on the points and close the points up very quickly if you don't. There's an arrow on the brass flywheel that lines up with a notch on the back plate. And then it's a simple case of screwing it together and tightening it up, turning it over, and there you have it. A nice big fat spark. The HT lead was a bit long, so I trimmed it and fitted a new plug cap. Again, just removing any chance of problems. It's the lodge types that just screws into the lead. I find them very good. I don't know if this is an original lodge, probably a pattern, but it works well. And then just bung the old plug in it. And make sure everything's okay. Yep, we have a spark there as well. I don't know if you saw it there. Yep, yep, you can see that. That just leaves the kickstart spring. Um, it's straightforward. You, you just put the spring in there's a series of holes in the inner casing that the tang of the spring can go into usually just start at the one nearest the top line it up with the kick start put it on its splines and see if there's enough pressure in the spring to 
actually um, hold the kickstart against its detent. If it doesn't, then you just work your way through the different holes that are available. I have got to the point where you bring it to the lowest hole and bring the spring right through one revolution. That can be a pain, but it does give enough tension to hold the kickstart forward. Here I'm just tightening up the detent for the clutch adjustment knob. I found the two screws there loose so I may as well do it while I'm here. Securing the kickstart, just tapping it into place and then tighten the nuts and bolts. A nice new cover to go over the flywheel. The owner has provided that. It makes the whole engine look bigger, but nice, very nice bit of spin in there. And the centre badge, I suppose I should have put that on before I put the cover on. Still. And then finally, kick start. Um, sorry, the gear change. Tightening up the kickstart here. There we are. They work better with a nut and bolt in them. It's amazing how the camera picks up the sound. You think I was really hitting this. It's only the gentle taps just to locate it properly on its splines. And then tighten up the screw. Tried to put the foot press footrest into position, but the threads on the end of the shaft look damaged, so I will have to sort them out before finally putting that into place anyway hopefully the engine's finished that's it for now thanks for watching